So yeah, tossing a single slot, low profile RTX card in this thing is really up the performance. And what you're looking at right now is the Minisforum MS-01. Obviously a very small form factor unit. And this is actually powered by an Intel 13th Gen i9. It's a mobile variant. And we've taken a look at it a couple times on the channel, testing out other single slot, low profile cards. But the one we're gonna be taking a look at today definitely takes the cake when it comes to performance because what we've got here is a low profile, single slot, RTX A2000. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. If you're into small form factor gaming PCs, then you're probably familiar with this card. This is the NVIDIA RTX A2000. And obviously we do have a low profile card here, but it takes up two slots. Now this has really been one of my favorite low profile cards, but I wanna make it a bit smaller so it'll fit in these newer mini PCs hitting the market like the MS-01 from Minus Forum. So obviously in order to do this, we'll need a low profile cooler for the A2000. And luckily Nerdware is creating these low profile coolers for the A2000. In fact, they're working on the A4000 low profile cooler also. Personally, haven't got my hands on one of those because it's definitely a bit expensive. And if I ever do, I'll probably want to go single slot with it. But this is really great. And if you head over to their website, you can check these out. They also offer a couple small form factor cases, but we're taking a look at the RTX A2000 low profile cooler. And I did pay out of pocket for this. These are coming soon. Uh, they've got a couple batches coming, so definitely be patient. I've already pulled mine out of the packaging and taken a look at it. Really nice build quality. Copper base, stainless steel shroud, and this thing definitely has some heft to it. There's a lot more metal here than there is in the stock cooler of the A2000, so I suspect we might see lower temps also. But yeah, this is really awesome. Blower style fan, obviously, to keep it low profile. Super nice copper base here. Everything makes contact that needs to make contact with that base. And again, overall, I'm very impressed with the build quality. It's got a 50 millimeter PWM ball bearing blower style fan. And this comes with the cooler itself, mounting screws, thermal pads for the memory, a T6 and T8 screwdriver to disassemble the A2000. Obviously, we're going to need to pull the shroud and the cooler off of that other one. Plus, they include a PTM 7950 phase change pad for the GPU die. So first things first, we're going to need to disassemble the A2000. We need to get rid of that larger shroud, fan, and the heat sink underneath. And this A2000's definitely been through it. I've been up the bracket a little bit. I've used this in all kinds of little builds here and there. I've also got a low profile bracket for it, but of course, it's not a single slot. So we'll go ahead and get this shroud off. It's actually pretty simple to do so. So we've got all the screws out. We'll go ahead and take this off. We'll unplug that blower style fan. And uh, you know, the first time I ever took one of these apart, I was kind of blown away by how small the heat sink itself really is. Now it's definitely taller because it will take up two slots. It's aluminum and uh, I mean, it's just not a lot of mass here. So just looking at that new low profile cooler from Nerdware, I think we could definitely see lower temps. Next thing we need to do is remove the heat sink from the A2000 and it uses a tension bracket on the bottom with just two screws. I went ahead and pulled those off and this has definitely been a used A2000. This thing's been on there from the factory. Uh, thermal paste has never been changed or anything like that. So getting it off the first time might be a bit of a pain. Just give it a little bit of a wiggle. There we go. And now we can see that the die itself makes contact with the heat sink. We've got some thermal pads there for the memory. And this is a six gig model of the A2000. I picked this up months ago on Amazon. I believe it was 239. Keep an eye out for lower prices like that because they do pop up every once in a while, especially on Amazon and eBay. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this whole board up with some isopropyl alcohol. So I've cleaned it up the best I could. And with this, we're gonna be using that stock tension bracket with the new included screws. I love the way they designed this new cooler. We've got some cutouts there in the copper. Basically, it's not gonna make contact with any of the caps or the VRM. So this is gonna fit perfectly on top of the A2000 board. And once it's completed, it looks a little something like this. I use the included phase change pad for the GPU die and the included thermal pads for the VRAM. Super easy installation on that A2000. Everything fit perfectly. It went exactly where it needed to go. And we used the tension bracket that came off of the card with the new screws that are included with the kit. And just to give you a look here, I wanted to show you this side by side with a low profile single slot RX 6400. Now the A2000 is really gonna super exceed the performance that the RX 6400 can put out. 
but we do need a small form factor unit for this to go into. Of course, you could put this in a larger PC if you wanted to, but I think the whole point of slimming this thing down is for something like this. This is the Menace Forum MS-01. It's the 13th gen model, so we've got the i9-13900H. It's a mobile CPU, but taking a look inside, we've got a PCIe X16 slot, and we needed that low-profile single-slot card fit in here. And another big thing here is the A2000 doesn't require any extra power connector. It's going to draw everything it needs from that PCIe slot, so we don't need an extra 8-pin connector or anything like that. This kind of just slots right in here, and it does fit perfectly in the MS-01. And yeah, as you can see, it's not hanging out at the top. We've got access to all of those mini display ports on the A2000. And once we slide the cover on this mini PC, you can see we'll have an area where fresh air can be pulled directly into that blower fan on the GPU. Now, it's time to get into some testing with this thing. So I'm going to be using Windows 11 Pro installed on the 2TB NVMe drive. As you can see, we've got that i9-13900H. And of course, we've got the A2000 with 6 gigs of VRAM. Just taking a look at Afterburner, now the stock profile, the stock fan curve is meant for the stock cooler, but I've left it exactly where it's at. This does have a thermal throttle at 88 degrees Celsius. We can increase this or lower it. I think it'll be fine the way it is. Haven't messed around with the fan curve at all. It would probably help out in the long run, but I'm gonna leave it right here. What we're gonna do is just run a quick stress test on the GPU. I wanna show you that this thing doesn't directly jump up to thermal throttle. It actually takes a while. And while gaming, I've already done some testing, it's actually nice and quiet. Taking this thing up to 100% fan speed will definitely keep it nice and cool, but it's gonna get much louder. But with the stock fan curve right now, this thing is really quiet. I've got the lid on the MS-01. You can see that the temp is slowly climbing up, but our fan speed is kind of staying the same. Now, once we hit around 70 degrees Celsius, that fan does jump up a bit, but I haven't hit thermal throttle with it yet, and it hasn't been pegged out at 100% unless I've done that through MSI Afterburner. Uh, you can go through and adjust that fan curve to your liking, but this stock fan curve is actually working out really well. And when we get into game testing, I will have that GPU temp on screen so you can see what's going on with it. But the first thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks. First up, we've got 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a 37,040. This is definitely a lower end benchmark really made for iGPUs, but it's definitely given us a much higher score than any other iGPU on the market. Fire Strike coming in with a 15,141. And finally, we've got Time Spy with a 6,567. We're not overclocked either, so this card does really fluctuate quite a bit. I've seen this card boost up to 2000 megahertz in some cases, but the base clock on this is 1500 megahertz. But with a good little overclock, you can see a nice boost in performance. Now, these are just synthetics. It's time to jump into some real world gaming. Also gonna check out those temps on this GPU. Here's Helldivers 2, 1080p, high, and I didn't use DLSS with this one. Had a good feeling this was gonna work pretty well. I've had good luck on iGPUs with this, and the A2000 can definitely run this game really well. Up in the top left hand corner, we've got Afterburner running, and you can see that our GPU temp right now is 73 degrees Celsius. And remember, from the factory, thermal throttle is set at 88 degrees Celsius here. Um, it's looking pretty good, and I'll tell you, since it's in this MS-01, Mainly, what I'm hearing here from the fan is not the GPU, but the CPU fan, because we've got that i9 to take care of. Next up, Horizon Forbidden West, and with this I did have to drop it down to low, but we are at 1080, and I also enabled DLSS. I went to performance with it. This one was just really hitting up this A2000. You can see that our clocks on the GPU are now higher with this game, but our temps are a bit lower, and I think it comes down to using DLSS and those lower settings. But the next one we have here is PAL World. High settings, 1080p, not bad at all. Got a few hiccups here and there, but you know, those are shaders caching with this game. Overall, I think we're seeing some pretty decent performance out of this one. And the next one I wanted to test here was Red Dead 2. I just used the built-in benchmark. 1080p, ultra settings, DLSS set to balance. It's kind of a must for the A2000 in this game. You can see our minimum did go pretty low to 19. We had a maximum of 122 and an average of 78. Forza Horizon 5, just a really well optimized game, 1080p, ultra, we don't need DLSS with this. We're seeing averages of around 105 FPS. And I know for a fact that the A2000 with some DLSS can run this just fine at 1440p up in the 80s. 
Here's Ratchet and Clank, a rift apart, and I thought I'd see much better performance out of this. I mean, we're over 60, but I did have to take DLSS to performance using the high settings at 1080p. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 1080p Ultra with DLSS set to auto. Once I go into the game and choose any of these, it usually enables FSR or DLSS, and it actually took this down to 720p, but it's upscaling to 1080. We had an average of 82 FPS on this little machine. I've had really good luck with this game on the A2000 and even lower end RTX cards, and it really comes down to DLSS working really well with this game. We had an average of 84 FPS with Cyberpunk 2077. Now I do wish that this was their newer architecture, like the A4000, that way we could use frame generation, because when it comes to frame generation and games like this, it really does make a difference. But those A4000 cards are very, very expensive. Overall, really impressed with this low-profile single-slot cooler for the RTX A2000. I think they've done a bang-up job here. Highest temp I saw on this card while doing all of my testing here was 83 degrees Celsius, which definitely sounds hot, but remember, I mean, we've got that thermal limit set at 88, so we didn't even limit this card yet. And keep in mind, this is in a super small form factor case. Putting this in a larger PC, or if you had more airflow just blowing over the card itself, you could see lower temps. But the way it is, even in the MS-01, this card with this cooler is definitely an awesome choice. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you've got an A2000 and you're looking for a low-profile single-slot cooler, I'll leave some links in the description to Nerdware. Remember, they're coming soon. I think they've got a couple batches ordered. Uh, it really depends on if a lot of people want to pick them up or not. Very small company, but from what I've seen so far with this cooler, I think they're making some awesome products. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.